The animal kingdom is full of magnificent animals, but not all of them get along. In fact, some rivalries are so intense that they're pretty much just full-on hatreds. And what happens when you make two aggressive animals enemies? Well, somebody is going to get very, very hurt, and it's probably going to be the cameraman, but uh, let's hope not. From an unusual height challenged rivalry to the Battle of the Swamp Dwellers, let's meet 15 aggressive animals that hate each other. <sighs> Number 15. Crocs and giraffes hate each other. It does sound like a bizarre rivalry, doesn't it? The world's tallest animal and a predator who likes to keep extremely low to the ground. But it's absolutely true, these two animals have a unique hatred. And I think it's pretty obvious why. Giraffes are just too tall. Approximately 75% of all young giraffes don't make it to adulthood, due to opportunistic predators attacking them. In fact, the mortality rates of giraffes are among the highest in the entire animal kingdom. And given that crocodiles will attack pretty much any living creature they can find, I think you can work out what's happening here. If a crocodile can get hold of the giraffe's legs, you can pretty much bet that it's all over for the big guy. Once the giraffe is on the ground, its odds of surviving are… well, they're not good. I can't lie. Thankfully, giraffes use their impressive height to their advantage. But it doesn't necessarily make things any easier. After all, there's a reason that the mortality rate is so high for these tall, tall animals. When a big one falls, the little ones feed. That's an excerpt from my upcoming book on philosophical animal feuds. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Pythons and Alligators If you happen to live in Florida, you have the misfortune of sharing your home with some of nature's most terrifying predators, gators. Sorry about that, but it turns out you're not the only ones facing the problem of the gator. Pythons have the exact same problem. In the Florida Everglades, the relationship between pythons and alligators is notoriously hostile. Around the year 2000, people started releasing pet pythons into the wild, kickstarting a long-term problem. In fact, it's such a problem that there are quite literally hundreds of videos online of pythons and alligators fighting in the wilderness of the Florida Everglades. And surprisingly, it's the pythons who are kick-starting all of the trouble. While they would never attempt to start trouble with an adult male gator, the python seemingly has no problem tackling a female gator. By wrapping itself around the gator and repeatedly biting, the python stands a pretty good chance of winning the fight. Apparently, this is just par for the course now in this part of Florida. There are many gators with python scars and pythons that have been wounded by gators. So yeah, that's a perfectly healthy relationship. I'm sure we can all agree. Number 13. Sperm Whales and Giant Squids You'd think that the giant squid with all of its evolutionary talents, the dark ink jets, excellent eyesight, would make it a pretty formidable and unbeatable enemy, but you'd be wrong. Because it turns out that the sperm whale has absolutely no problem hunting and killing them. No problem whatsoever. According to one squid expert, the number of squids eaten by sperm whales is even higher than those harvested worldwide by humans for food. And. As anybody who has ever visited an all-you-can-eat seafood restaurant will tell ya, there are a lot of squid rings out there in the world. Apparently, there is an unthinkable number of battles between squids and whales every single day, making this one of the world's least known but most intense feuds. Spare a thought for those innocent and unsuspecting squids, which will inevitably find themselves the main course of a whale lunch. The ongoing struggles between the giant squid and the sperm whale have become legendary for marine biologists. In fact, there are now experts worldwide investigating this most unique feud in the hopes of getting to the bottom of exactly what has been going on here. I wonder how deep it goes. Well, it's the ocean, so probably that deep. Number 12. Elephants and Rhinos Alright, place your bets, it's elephants versus rhinos, folks. 
Who will win the battle of the titans? Of course, rhinos are well known for being some of the most ill-tempered and aggressive animals on the planet, but elephants, well, they're pretty intense too. Let's find out, shall we? In the wild animal kingdom, this ongoing battle happens a lot more often than you may think. And who comes out on top? Well, it's actually a little complicated. Of all the animal hatreds in the world, this is one of the most evenly matched pairings you will ever find. Not only are they both both incredibly heavy and strong, but they both have incredible stamina and are equally intelligent. making it very difficult to pick a clear winner. In some cases, the elephant may be able to outwit the rhino, but in others, the rhino could easily just charge the elephant right down. This ain't no Godzilla vs. Kong type battle. The elephant-rhino feud will probably never end amicably. Well, why would it? This is the animal kingdom we're talking about, not a reality show, but I think it's pretty obvious that this hatred is easily one of the most evenly matched in the world. Now throw Godzilla in the mix, and let's see what happens. Number 11. Lions and Cape Buffaloes the lion has something of a reputation as the king of the jungle, but that doesn't mean that things are necessarily easy. The lion has something of a rivalry with the Cape Buffalo, one of the world's most dangerous animals. So dangerous, actually, that they have their own terrifying nickname, the Black Death. While the lion is a notoriously formidable predator, the Cape Buffalo is a worthy opponent in its own right. After all, you don't earn a nickname like the Black Death without, you know, causing a few casualties. The lion has actually been known to take down the Cape Buffalo with next to no difficulty. but they sure don't go down without a fight. If the lion happens to find himself taking on a Cape Buffalo, you can pretty much guarantee that the buffalo will take him out with very little effort. That's just one of those unspoken laws of nature. You never take on a Cape Buffalo without having a small army behind you. It's just common sense. The lion and the Cape Buffalo are undeniably well matched. The buffalo alone is known to gore and kill over 200 people every year, making it one of the world's most dangerous dangerous species. And the lion, well, you know all about the lion, they just can't wait to be king. Number 10. Hyenas and Wild Dogs Okay, I know what you're gonna say. And yes, hyenas pretty much hate everybody, but they have an especially intense hatred for wild dogs. If you're wondering why, let me just say this. Have you ever been at an all-you-can-eat place and somebody else swoops in to take the food you were waiting for? That's pretty much why. In the South African wilderness, the hyena and wild dog are sworn enemies. Two powerful predators hunting for the exact same prey. It's really inevitable that these two formidable creatures would end up loathing one another. This battle is not new, and it's not uncommon. Actually, these animals are known to fight it out pretty much all the time. And always over food. Who wins, you may be asking? It's pretty much whoever has the bigger pack. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's more of a coin toss situation. The hyena slash wild dog battle is a tale as old as time, and it will continue to be so. We'll never truly know who is the overall winner in this intense battle, but we can make wild speculations. Feel free to drop your guess in the comments, and we will, uh, well, uh, we'll acknowledge that they exist. How about that? Number 9. Tigers and Bears What, you thought the whole bear v lions thing was just for the jungle book? Guess again, my friend. It's absolutely true. Tigers and bears clash a lot more often than you may be expecting. In fact, bears make up around 15% of some tigers' diets. One hell of a diet, right? As it turns out, there are all kinds of rivalries going on here, depending on the subspecies. For instance, Bengal tigers occasionally target sloth bears, while Siberian tigers regularly attack Asiatic black bears. Basically, tigers just really like attacking and killing bears. It's a thing. According to experts, some tigers actually have the ability to imitate the call of a bear, luring the bear into their trap and ambushing them. Not a bad strategy, but don't be fooled. It's not always the tiger that starts this. There have been cases where the brown bear has successfully killed and eaten the tiger. If the fight between tigers and bears seems like a pretty open and shut case at first, the tiger ambushes the bear and it's pretty much all over. But like everything in the animal kingdom, it doesn't always go like that. 
want. And when it goes wrong for the tiger, it really goes wrong for the tiger. Number 8. Bees and Giant Hornets Again, we're talking about a notoriously hateful creature, the Asian Giant Hornet, or as it's also known, the Death Hornet. It should come as absolutely no surprise to anybody that such a vehemently unpleasant creature has so many enemies. Like for instance, the Honey Bee. The Honey Bee is an incredibly productive animal, wanting nothing more than to go about its day and do its job. And yet, these poor little guys have to deal with one of the most annoying pests in the world. Between May and November, Asian giant hornets forage for protein-based food. Usually, that's just beetles or other insects and spiders, but by August, the hornet will begin hunting for honeybees alone. And they are sadistic. The hornets don't like to wait for one particular target, instead choosing to target the colony as a whole, effectively destroying the whole thing in a matter of moments. In this case, it's pretty obvious why the feud exists. The hornets are just setting fire to the bee's house and enjoying the chaos that unfolds. Honestly, I'm finding it a little hard to not hate the hornets myself, so I get it. Honeybees, if you're watching and somehow understand this, I'm with ya. Uh, buzz, buzz old friend, buzz buzz. Number 7. Wild Boars and Wolves if you've been around for a while, you'll know that the wolf is a pretty intense and terrifying foe. But even the wolf has its worthy adversaries, and one of them is that unpredictable old pig, the wild boar. Who's gonna win in this fight? As always, it very much depends on the context. If it's a pack of wolves versus one wild boar, the fight is over before it even started. I mean, come on. The wild boar simply has no chance of taking on a whole pack of hungry wolves. The same is true if if it is the other way around. If, however, you somehow manage to witness a one-on-one -on -one fight between a wolf and a wild boar, the outcome will be more unpredictable. Generally speaking, the wolf will probably come out on top more than the wild boar, but there are always exceptions to the rule. The likelihood of these two actually fighting in the wild is, uh, well, it's pretty darn unlikely, but if it did ever come to that, you can be sure that the wolf would most likely win. Just don't tell the wild boar that you don't want one of those guys chasing you. I speak from experience. Number 6. Cobras and Mongooses and now we come to a fight that's, uh, well, it's pretty easy to resolve, actually. Cobras and mongooses really hate one another, and their fights pretty much always end the exact same way. Place your bets because there's a real winner to this fight. Obviously, cobras can vary in size, but the mongoose? Not so much. The mongoose usually is around 3 feet long, making it consistently larger than the cobra. Because of that size advantage, the mongoose always ends up triumphing over for the snake. But how exactly does it win? The technique is not particularly complicated. The mongoose just darts around at lightning speed, forcing the cobra to strike over and over until eventually it tires itself out. The mongoose then easily wipes out the snake, bringing a very decisive end to this notorious rivalry. It's so simple, cobras and mongooses will probably never get along no matter what. It's just not going to happen. After all, the mongoose knows for a fact that it can take out the little guy, so why even bother trying to play nice? When you know you can win a fight with minimal effort, you may as well place a bet on yourself. Win and pocket the profit. Everyone would do that, right? Please say yes. Number 5. Komodo Dragons and Monkeys as one of the most dangerous reptiles on the planet, it's no surprise that the Komodo dragon has earned its fair share of enemies. But one of its most common enemies may surprise ya, the monkey. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Apparently, the Komodo dragon and the monkey have a long-term hatred of one another. Presumably just because they can. The Komodo dragon is known for its highly venomous bite, and they have been seen to attack and consume monkeys whenever they can successfully take one down. I guess if you're gonna put the work in to actually find and kill one, you may as well get a meal out of it, right? I'm not confident enough to say one will beat the other, but this is pretty much as close to Godzilla versus King Kong as you can get in real life. The Komodo dragon and the monkey have a long and very antagonistic relationship.
relationship with one another, and let's be honest, nobody wants to watch a Komodo dragon chowing down on a monkey. That's a pretty gross thought to have, but hey, that's mother nature for you, right? Just a whole bunch of animals doing gross things to one another. Number 4. White Sharks and Killer Whales if you had to place a bet on who would win in a fight between a great white and a killer whale, chances are you'd say the great white, because you probably saw Jaws, and that's a totally reasonable bet. But would you be right? According to experts, no. However, you placed the bet, so you gotta follow through. Obviously, both the Great White and the Killer Whale are terrifyingly fearsome predators, but apparently it's not a particularly close fight. According to researchers who monitored these incredible animals around California's southeast Farallon Island, Great Whites have an unusual habit. Whenever Killer Whales happen to pass through the area, the Great Whites totally vanish from the waters and don't return until the next season. What's all that about? Even the marine experts aren't totally sure, but it's generally assumed to be one of two things. Fear or just plain bullying. Apparently, it's not unheard of killer whales to target great whites as prey, which would certainly explain the fear theory, but killer whales and great whites also tend to pursue the same prey, namely elephant seals, so the whale may be bullying the sharks until they flee. A shark getting bullied? They didn't put that in the Jaws movie, eh? Number 3. Snakes and Honey Badgers If you're new to this channel, we should probably note some universal truths we like to acknowledge here. The biggest one being the honey badger is one of the most adorably psychotic animals on the planet. Apparently, snakes agree, which is why they hate the honey badger. The honey badger is a small animal, sure, but it has absolutely no fear. This little creature is more than willing to take on any animal, no matter its size, and has even been recorded scaring lions away from their own kill. The reason for this unusual hatred between the honey badger and the snake comes down to something we can all relate to. The badger gets hungry. And believe me, the honey badger will eat anything, including venomous snakes. The snake will often bite the badger to kill it, but the venom doesn't seem to affect the honey badger. After sleeping it off, the badger will just finish the job and consume its meal. I mean, pretty much every animal in the world could easily hate the honey badger, after all, it's not every day you see a short little guy willing to lash out at anybody and everybody that passes. Actually, I can think of quite a few. I have at least eight names in my head right now. Number 2. Ants and Termites Given that they're both super small little creatures, you'd think that ants and termites would get along, right? You'd be wrong, of course, but it's nice to see that you're thinking positively. Actually, these two super small insects loathe each other, mostly because one eats the other, but which one? Okay, I'm going to spoil the answer immediately. While termites face many predators in their daily lives, the ant is by far the most common. The ant eats the termite mostly because it's an incredible source of protein, and there are other motives too, like, for instance, taking out the competition. When you really stop to think about it, the animal kingdom is just one big reality show where they're competing to knock one another out. Because ants and termites require similar habitats, their natural competitors Editors, meaning that wiping the other out will be very beneficial in the long run. Does that make it okay? Uh, probably not. Is it going to stop them? Definitely not. So there you have it. There's a whole war raging below us, and we just never even knew about it. Although, let's be honest, there probably aren't many humans who are willing to take either side on this one. In fact, they'd probably use that quote from the Godzilla movies, let them fight. Number 1. Polar Bears and Walruses I know, this probably sounds like a bizarre hatred. What can I say? Our culture has provided something of a romanticized view of Arctic animals. But no, both the polar bear and the walrus can be very aggressive animals, and they really do not get along. I'm sorry to spoil your Christmas winter wonderland fantasies. The polar bear is often considered to be the king of the Arctic, with all of the other Arctic animals bowing down and respecting his authority, except for the walrus, 
Like all good rebels, the walrus just refuses to conform to the reign of terror on which the polar bear thrives. And while the polar bear doesn't actually hunt walruses, it does like to teach these toothy guys a lesson. Often a polar bear will charge into a pack of walruses just to scare them back into the water. A show of force that really just confirms exactly why the walruses hate these guys. As yet, we're not sure that walruses are capable of organizing protests, but you can be sure that if they did, they would absolutely protest against the tyrannical rule of the polar bear. Because, let's be honest, no bear should be given that amount of power. Make it a democratic process at least. Which of these animal hatreds surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.